Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sechus Pesachim Daf Yud Beis is devoted almost entirely to a discussion of how off people can be in their estimation of what time of day they are holding. Um, in our days we have watches, but in the days of Chazal people had to judge the time by the sun and by the shadows that it cast, and they could be off by a certain number of hours. This is relevant to two sugyas which we are comparing. This is the sugya of when two witnesses testify in court, but they give different times as to when the crime that they saw committed actually occurred. When do we say that they are contradicting each other? When do we say that they're just making a mistake? And that has to be compared to a discussion of when we are concerned that one may misjudge the time of the Isser of Chametz and how much earlier we have to therefore make that time in order to make sure that he doesn't go over by mistake. Towards the end of the death, the Gemara will discuss the proper time of day in which one should be eating his meal, depending on what his employment is. Okay, so first of all, as far as when two witnesses come to court, we know that the halacha is, is that they are each interviewed separately, and if their testimony is found to be internally contradictory, meaning they don't agree on the details, then the aidist is thrown out, the testimony is rejected. So the question is, if they give a different time, how far apart do we say that they are mistaken, and how far apart do we say that they are contradictory? So this is a machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, two ten nine. What happens when they're two hours apart? If they're one hour apart, one says that the crime occurred in the third hour, one says the fourth hour. So then we assume that's just chalked up to an error. It's not contradictory. We can't throw the testimony out. If, however, they are two hours apart, so that's a machlokas. Rabbi Meir um, says that it's contradictory. You throw it out. Rabbi Yehuda says unless. It's clearly different times because one is at the edge of the day, and you can clearly see how the sun is different. If it's standard times, like uh, 3 or 4 o'clock, or 3 or 5 o'clock, like the third hour, the fifth hour of the day, then uh, we don't throw it out. We say people can make mistakes. Now, so we're focusing on this machlokas here. What happens when when the two... uh, Witnesses come to court. One says that a murder happened in the third hour. One says it happens in the fifth hour. Can we accept it or not? According to Rabbi Meir, we have to throw out that testimony is contradictory. According to Rabbi Huda, we can accept it. Machlokas between Abaye and Rava, how to understand this Machlokas Hanayim. And the issue is as follows. There are two potential ways that the witnesses could be giving different information even if they actually saw the same crime. One would be if they made a mistake in estimating what the time of day was. The other one would be if just their language is different. When one says the third hour, maybe he means the end of the third hour, and when the other one says the fourth hour, maybe he means the beginning of the fourth hour, which is one minute later, and they're really saying the same time. It's just different use of words. So that wouldn't be considered contradictory at all. So the question is, what is exactly this machluk is about? So Abaye and Rava understand it differently. Abaye says, we as a court will generally assume that they meant the part of the hour that's closest together. So if one says three, the third hour, one says the fourth hour, then we assume that it's the same time. It's off by a minute or two. The one who says the third hour means the end of the third hour. The one who means the fourth hour means the beginning of the fourth hour. Therefore, if it's the third hour and the fifth hour, so they're maximally in an hour and a bit apart because we say one means the end of the third, one means the beginning of the fifth. That's the machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Meir says a person can be off by an hour and a bit. Rabbi Huda says, no, a person cannot be off by an hour and a bit. A person can only be off by a bit. Comes Rava, and he says, I don't understand you. We know that as court judges, it's our responsibility to try to find all possible excuses to not give a person the death penalty. And therefore, if someone's committed a murder, why would we assume that they made mistakes in their language? We can flex our understanding of his use of language. When the witnesses say third hour and fifth hour, why should we run with the assumption that they mean the closest times if we're trying to find ways to uh, rule that the the accused murderer is really innocent, which is what we're supposed to do, it says, we're supposed to find the zechus for him, then we should assume that the use of language was as far apart as possible. The one who said the third hour meant the beginning of the third hour, and the one who said the fifth hour meant the end of the fifth hour, which is actually just under three hours apart, instead of just under an hour apart. Instead of just over an hour apart. So therefore, Rav says that must be what we are going to do. Rav says we're actually going to assume that they're just under three hours apart. 
And the machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda is how much is a natural is a is a possible mistake. And this we don't have options to flex with. Whatever a person can err in his judgment of the time of the day is included in the range of testimony that he's giving. If he can be off by three hours, so then when he says it's the third hour, you have to give him a range of three hours that he could have been off by. So, um, Rabbi therefore says that's the machlokes. Rabbi Meir says uh, a person can't be off by three hours. A person can only be off by less than that. And therefore, he's not making a mistake. If one says the third hour, one says the fifth hour, we assume it means the beginning of the third hour and the end of the fifth. They're off by nearly three hours, and a person doesn't make a mistake misjudging time by that much. And therefore, we would have to assume that they are contradictory uh, witnesses. They are contradictory witnesses, and the court, the edis is thrown out. According to Rabbi Yehuda, a person could be off by just under three hours, and therefore the uh, uh, testimony is accepted. So now there's a couple of questions on this. One is from the Allah Chavidim Zomimim, and then we'll bring in our Mishnah about Chametz, and we'll try to see how the opinions of Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Meir fit with their opinions in the case of Chametz. Now as far as Edom Zomimim, so this is a kasha on Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Huda says that a person could be off up to three hours. Now the Gemara says that there is a rule in Halacha that testimony has to be huzamable. What does huzamah mean? Huzamah means when a pair of witnesses say testimony, they have to say that they were in a certain place at a certain time. And we ask them seven questions to ascertain where they were and what time the crime was. We ask them, what Shemitah cycle were you in? What year was it? We ask them, what month was it? What day of the month was it? What day of the week was it? What hour of the day was it? And what place were you in? All these seven questions have to be answered. If a witness cannot answer any of these questions, his testimony is invalidated because then we can't do Hazama. Hazama means that another pair will come and say, you were not in the place you say you were at that time. I know because I was with you somewhere else. And if that happens, that's called Hazama. We accept the testimony of this second pair of Adam, and the original pair are declared liars. It's a Gzeris Akazov. And whatever they were planning on falsely testifying, the the uh, the accused has done whatever punishment he would have gotten, they get. Even the death penalty. If they were trying to give the accused the death penalty, they will get the death penalty themselves. But they have to positively answer these seven questions, otherwise we can't have Hazama. There are other questions we ask them, which are called bedikos. These are called chakiros. There are bedikos, which is just about the details. What was the murder weapon? Uh, what direction was he facing? What was he wearing? All these details. If somebody says they don't know, they don't know. It doesn't cancel the testimony. You don't have to know every single thing. There's no problem of edus shi'at yachal azima. That's not huzam abo. So now the question is asked on Rabbi Huda is if somebody could be off as much as three hours, so you can't huzam him. What are you going to say? You weren't there at the time you said. He'll say, okay, yeah, I was, sorry, I miscalculated the time by three hours. I said it was at 12 o'clock. And you're telling me I was with you at 12 o'clock in the pizza store on Avenue J, so I couldn't have seen the crime that happened in uh, West Virginia. I was off by three hours. My calculation was off by three hours. I drove from here to there. and the, So that wouldn't be, you cannot do Hazama there. So According to Rabbi Yehuda, that a person could be expected to be off by three hours, every testimony is not hosomable and therefore should be invalid, and obviously that cannot be the case. So the Gemara answers, no, you could hosom it if the guy says you were with me for the entire span of three hours. If it says you were there from the time you said it, all the way until as far as the range of mistakes could go, and then you would have an actual hosoming. Now the Gemara actually spells out the range of hours which the second set of witnesses that are coming to be mazim to say that the first witnesses were with us, and therefore they're liars, how much, how many hours do they actually have to cover to say that those witnesses were with them in a different place in order to for sure uh, counteract any excuses they may say that they made a mistake. So the truth is it's twice as much as the amount that they could actually err, because they could say, those witnesses could say, oh, I was with you, you're saying I was with you at 3 o'clock, it was really, uh, I made a mistake, and the actual crime happened two hours earlier, or two hours later. So you have twice the range of mistakes. Now, um, the opinions of Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda, as we have seen, according to Rabbi Meir, a person can err up to just under two hours, at least according to Rava's understanding. That is, the case, let's say, was where one witness uh, said it happened in the second hour, and the other said the third hour. So the second hour is the beginning of the second, third hour is the end of the third, and they're just under two hours apart. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it could even be just under three hours apart. One said the second hour, and one said 
uh, the fourth hour, and therefore it's the beginning of the second, end of the fourth, which is just under three hours. So now the Gemara spells out how this actually works. The Gemara says, therefore, according to Rabbi Meir, you would have to have a range of four hours covered, two hours before and two hours after the time, he said. According to Rabbi Yehuda, you would actually have to have a range of six hours covered, three hours before and three hours after the time, he said. This time, however, is limited by another factor, and that's that you cannot say something happened during the day and then say, I made a mistake, it really happened at night. That kind of error you wouldn't make. According to Rabbi Yehuda, there's another mistake. You can't say it happened before midday and then say that I made a mistake. It really happened after midday. People don't make mistakes between before midday and after midday because since once the sun crosses the midpoint of the sky, the shadows shift to the other side of the object and people will see which side of the object the shadow is on and not make that kind of mistake. Now the Gemara spells out exactly how it works. The Gemara says, according to Rabbi Mayer, the case is that uh, one witness said that it happened in the second hour, one witness said it happened in the third hour. We assume that means the beginning of the second hour and the end of the third hour. So we're going to give you two hours before and two hours after. So you have to cover from two hours before the beginning of the second hour, which should really be an hour before the first hour. That's 11 o'clock. That's one hour before sunrise. We do not do that because you can't make a mistake and say it happened at night. And therefore you get from one hour before from the beginning of the day. And you get until two hours after the latest time that the latest witness had said. And that is, he said the third hour, he meant the end of the third hour. So you get until um, the uh, end of the fifth hour. According to um, Rabbi Yehuda, the times were the second hour and the fourth hour, at least according to the uh, version that the Gemara is using now. So therefore, again, you should get an hour earlier, but you're limited to two hours before. You're limited to the beginning of the first hour. The second witness said the fourth hour meant the end of the fourth hour, and therefore he gets an additional three hours. You should really get to the end of the seventh hour. However, we don't give you that far because that would be the other side of midday. Midday is the beginning of the seventh hour, and therefore you just get up to midday. You don't get any further to say that you made a mistake, and therefore the... uh, Adam that are coming to say that you are lying because you were with us, they ha- they have to say that these witnesses were w- with them from the beginning of the first hour till the end of the sixth hour, according to Rabbi Huda. Now Rashi points out that all this is just to make these first pair of witnesses into Adam Zomimim, that they would get the penalty that they were trying to incur on the person that they were testifying against. The only way that could happen is if you testify that both of them were with you and both of them are lying, and because you, they were somewhere else. In order to just make their testimony invalidated, all you have to do is show that they're not agreeing with each other. Once you force somebody to say, oh, I made a mistake, and it was a couple of hours earlier than I said, you've already made him different than the testimony of his friend, his other witness, his his, his partner witness, to the point that those two testimonies are no longer resolvable. They can't fit together anymore. At that point, you would throw out the testimony, and you would not uh, convict the person that they were accusing, even though you wouldn't necessarily make them zone the Gemara now asks that these times of mistakes don't fit in with our Mishnah about Hachas Chametz. In our Mishnah, we had seen that uh, we back up the latest time for eating Chametz from the Daraisa time. Um, according to Rabbi Meir, we back it up by one hour. According to Rabbi Huda, we back it up by two hours. Rabbi Huda allows for more mistakes than Rabbi Meir does. Now, the Gemara says that both according to Baya and according to Rava, these numbers don't really fit. And the Gemara asks all four versions, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meir, Bay, and Rava, and the Gemara uh, answers them each. So first of all, there are two versions of Abaye, actually. The version of Abaye, which we've been discussing up till now, says that Rabbi Meir allows for mistakes of just a couple of minutes, and Rabbi Yehuda allows for mistakes of up to an hour and a few minutes. Either way, that doesn't match, because here, in the Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda allows for up to two hours mistakes, and Rabbi Meir allows for up to a full hour mistakes. Now, the first version of Abaye, which we had seen on Daf Yud Aleph, is where Abaye says that actually their machokis is only about language. According to Rabbi Meir, nobody makes a mistake at all. What actually happened was, let's say, the uh, crime that the witnesses saw occurred at exactly the change over between the third hour and the fourth hour. And one witness called it the third hour, one witness called it the fourth hour. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it could be even an hour um, that we we... We say that their testimony counts even if they're as much as an hour uh, further apart because we allow them half an hour mistake and they each were off by half an hour towards the middle time at which the crime actually happened. So according to this, 
Um, the times here still don't fit because Rabbi Meir is backing up the latest time for reading Chametz by an hour. And according to this version of Abai, he doesn't allow a time for any mistakes. And according to um, Rabbi Huda, we're b- b- backing it up by two hours, and Rabbi Huda only allows mistakes of up to half an hour. So either way, the mistakes allowed for and concerned about by Chametz are a lot greater than the mistakes which we allow for and are concerned about by testimony. So how do you understand this? So Abaye answers is that witnesses who come to go, who who come to court know that they're going to be interrogated backwards and forwards. They don't come unless they understand about times. They know how to tell time by the sun, and they're clear as to what happened. Therefore, we can assume we have less right to assume that mistakes were made. As far as Hilchas Pesach, though, everybody has to keep Hilchas Pesach, whether they're experts in the sun or they're not experts in the sun, and therefore we have to give an extra hour in order to be more machmir and prevent mistakes from happening, because every single person out there, even non-sun experts, have to be able to calculate this. The Gemara asks, according to Rava, Rava's understanding, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, should allow for mistakes of two or three hours, respectively. How come they only say that you have to back up the time by one or two hours, respectively? They're both off. So Gemara answer is no, because the time, the, the correct time in the for destroying Chometz is midday. So then you can tell it's the beginning of the seventh hour. The sun is already just past midday. It's already on the western side of the sky. So people could tell they won't make mistakes. That's why you don't have to back it up. Gemara says, but then why do you back it up at all? Why do you back it up one hour according to Rabbi Meir and two hours according to Rabbi Huda? So the Gemara says, well, one hour according to Rabbi Meir, we can understand because backing it up, because it's exactly midday, and midday gets confusing. Um, because you can't tell if the sun is on just just this side of midday or just that side of midday. According to Rashi's explanation, that that people could tell by the shadows, there really is no shadow. The sun is shining straight down. So that's why it's confusing there. That's why Rabbi Meir says you should back it up an hour. Of course, why does Rabbi Huda have to say you should back it up uh, two hours? So Abaye says that Rava's understanding is that, well, people, as far as Chametz is concerned, every everybody out there, even if they totally don't know what's going on with the sun, they're not experts at all, they have to keep the halacha of Chametz, and therefore we have to we have to allow for more mistakes than we would normally allow for. Rava gives his own answer. Rava says, uh, thank you for the explanation, but my real understanding is as follows. Rabbi Yehuda backs it up two hours, not because of a, a fear that people will um, eat chametz after the time da Arisa. The reason is we want to give people an extra hour in order to collect wood. Because Rabbi Yehuda holds that you're only allowed to destroy chametz with wood. You have to build a fire and burn it. And therefore, we want to give you an extra hour to collect wood, so we want to back it up an extra hour. You'll remember to collect wood when you remember, when you know you have to stop eating chametz. And that's when you'll go collect wood to make the fire. If we would just say, oh, collect wood an hour before, you'll forget. So the Gemara says, Ravina asked, Rava, how could you say that? Don't you know that Rava holds that once the time of beer that... that Ravina asks Rava, don't you know that Rabbi Yehuda holds once the time of beer has arrived, once the time to destroy it has arrived, then you could destroy it in any way you want. Rabbi Yehuda, who says you need to burn it, is only talking about before the latest time. Once the time for destruction has arrived, you, you, you don't need a wooden fire. So therefore, you don't need to collect wood. Once you're going up to the time, which is what you're trying to do, you're trying to tell me that you're giving me time, so you should have wood in order to burn it by the time it has to be burned. But at the time that it has to be burned already, it doesn't have to be burned. You could destroy it by crumbing it up or by throwing it into the ocean or flushing it down the toilet, whatever you need to do. So Gemara gives another answer over here. The Gemara says that, well, we're concerned that maybe it'll be a cloudy day and you won't be able to see the sun at all. There'll be no sun, there'll be no shadows, there'll be no anything. You won't be able to tell time. When the cloud cover is very heavy, you really can't see where the sun is. So Gemara says, well, if that's the case, so um, you sh- shouldn't be able to eat even two hours before. You could be off by who knows how long. So Rav Abba says, no, the fourth hour people know. People know that that's meal time. They understand when they're supposed to be eating a meal. So they know that that's not yet the time of destroying the chums. They know that they can still eat. From later than that, that's when people start getting confused if it's a cloudy day. Okay, now the Gemara launches into the topic of when people are supposed to have their meals. The Gemara quotes a Brisa that says that your meal time depends on who you are and what your employment is. 
So ludim are cannibals. They usually eat in the first hour of the day. Uh, they are ravenous. They eat a lot, and therefore they eat right away. The second hour of the day is when the the bandits eat, list them. The reason is because they are up at night, and they sleep for the first hour, and then they eat right away as soon as they wake up because they're hungry. They're also ravenous people. Third hour is when people who have inherited money that they didn't have to work for, so they, they eat freely. They're more easy with food than everyone else, and therefore they eat right away in the third hour. Fourth hour is when workers eat. Fifth hour is when Tamil Chachamim meet. And sixth hour is when everybody else eats. So Gemara says, how could you say that? Don't we know that fourth hour, we just quoted that Rav Papa said, the fourth hour is when everyone eats. So the Gemara says, switch the Tamil Chachamim and the everybody else. Everybody eats in the fourth hour. Tamil Chachamim eat in the sixth hour. Says the Gemara, somebody who eats afterwards is just like filling up a f- bottle with rocks. You may be putting food into your body, but it's not uh, affecting your body and might actually be hurting it like the rocks would hurt the bottle. Gemara says that's only if you didn't eat anything yet. If you've eaten something already earlier in the day, then what you eat later does have nutritious value. Okay, now, back to comparing the topic of mistakes made in judging the time for Hilchas Chametz and Hilchas Eidos, Rav Ashi says that the two machloksin are the same. Rav Yehuda and Rabbi Meir, and Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir are parallel machloksin in both cases. The Gemara says, obviously, that's what we've been saying all this time. The Gemara says, yes, but we had contradictions, and um, I want to just emphasize that the contradictions are resolvable, as we have said in Rava and in Abaye. You don't tell me that it's actually a machlokis tanaim between two Mishnahs, what Rabbi Huda holds and what Rabbi Meir really holds. Now, on the subject of testimony, the Gemara quotes of Simi Barashi, who says that all these mistakes that we've said is when people said a time, sixth hour, fifth hour, fourth hour, if they said a uh, uh, a part of the day, like if once they're just after sunrise, once they're just before sunrise, even though they're a couple of minutes apart, they're definitely saying different testimony, and their edus is invalidated. Mr. says, yeah, that's obvious. They said different times. They, they they do not fit together. Just after sunrise and just before sunrise are not the same. Mr. says, no, we're talking about where I once said at sunrise and once said just before sunrise. And Mr. says, again, those are different times. It's not the same. Of course it's contradictory. Mr. says, no, you may have thought that at sunrise means when there is light of sun in the sky, which is really just before sunrise, but it didn't actually mean his language, that's what he called sunrise. He didn't actually mean when the ball of the sun is visible. The other guy meant when the ball of the sun is visible, therefore he said that the same time, the same crime happened before sunrise, that's what he called it, but they're both referring to the same time period. So Gemara therefore says, we don't see that. We see that. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.